That concludes uh, bylaws uh, for this evening. I will, uh, uh, or I am pleased to provide the mayor's report uh, um, for the period of April the 15th to April the 28th. I just wanna highlight some of the things that have taken place in terms of meetings over this period. I can advise on the uh, April 17th, I had an opportunity to attend the Industrial Skills, Trades and Training uh, center uh, committee meeting. Again, this is a committee uh, made comprised of industry and led by the University College of the North uh, to look at the development of uh, industrial skills, trades and training facility. I'm very pleased that uh, they are moving forward on their both short and long term plan in terms of the implementation and uh, we, are, we do indeed have some training taking place now. <coughs> In addition, as a result of some of the potential uh, funding programs at both the provincial and the federal level, they're going to be looking at opportunities to uh, move the process along in terms of uh, hopefully realizing our long-term plan of seeing an industrial skills and trades training center in this community. As well, on April 17th, of course, we had the 2014 financial plan public hearing here at City Hall. I do want to thank those that have come out, and I appreciate uh, uh, finance providing, I believe, the report again this evening at the start of the meeting. I encourage members of this community to ask questions of all members of council with respect to the financial plan, because at the end of the day, it is the plan that delivers the programs and services for the residents of Thompson. On April the 22nd, I had the opportunity along with uh, Councillor Byer and Councillor Robinson to uh, attend a meeting with Dr. Alistair Bath, uh, who is going to be conducting a survey uh, with respect to uh, um, the work being done by Spirit Way and uh, the, the Wolf Project. I was very uh, pleased to see his presentation. I know he also provided it to the community on three successive nights. Um, I liked what I heard in terms of his uh, um, objective to carry out a two-year study to gauge the level of public interest in this community in terms of uh, if there is a desire to move forward and uh, I indicated I uh, look forward to having a regular dialogue with him and uh, and the results as they are being uh, released. Uh, a April the 26th I know that there were it was a very busy weekend I know the number of members of council went to uh, um, uh, one event that I was not able to attend, and I'm going to ask uh, Deputy Mayor Fenske to touch on that and perhaps uh, Councillor Lafreniere as well from a protege point of view. Uh, I, along with uh, Councillor Collada, attended the Relay for Life. I was very pleased to provide uh, greetings, uh, and really more than greetings at the opening, I provided uh, uh, our appreciation and our thanks as a community to the committee, the volunteers, all those that, are partici or that participated and all those that donated, and most importantly to the uh, cancer survivors. I did acknowledge uh, one special uh, cancer survivor, a two-time cancer survivor, and that's Councillor Collada. And uh, what I failed to mention, and I, I, I wanted to get there, but as always, when you're doing that, you have a limited time, but uh, Councillor Collada's uh, dedication in terms of uh, dealing with uh, her own health issues, but we lost a member <coughs> of the previous term, a member of council, uh, Councillor Brian Wilson, and uh, I know it took its toll on our administration and uh, on council, but I can tell you this, Councillor Clotta was there every night that Councillor Wilson was here and made sure, despite the fact she was dealing with the same issue, made sure that Councillor Wilson was comfortable and was able to do what he needed to do. And I want to thank you for that. And I, I say that because I think that uh, all the cancer survivors that I saw that evening, really, they reflected so many builders in this community and so many people that have contributed to making Thompson such a great place. And truly, they are the heroes and they are the ones that inspire. And I'll tell you, they inspire and they motivated, along with Donna Wilson and her volunteer committee, and they, the city of Thompson, the community of Thompson, raised over $170,000. Staggering number. Absolutely every member of this community should be proud. Interestingly enough, we had two representatives from the Canadian Cancer Society Manitoba vi Division visit us, and I know Councillor Collada and I had a chance to talk to them. They use Thompson as an example when they go to meet other communities that want to start the Relay for Life. They use Thompson as how a successful program. And they, entered, they made two announcements that evening. The first announcement they made is that for the first time in Canada, the local Relay for Life committee will be able to retain a portion of the funds raised at the event. It's not done anywhere else in Canada. For the first time, it will be done in Thompson. More importantly, 
They're going to be working with the group of the cancer survivors and the Relay for Life Committee to determine where those dollars are best suited to be spent in terms of addressing the issues in our community. Tremendous announcement. Again, Thompson as a leader. The second announcement, which I, I really appreciated and it's been raised with me recently, is that they are going to be introducing a program, a volunteer program, where volunteer drivers will be available to move cancer patients from their home to the cancer care facility and return them. And again, this is a tremendous message in terms of introducing a program that we see in other communities, but I've heard from so many individuals that part of the challenge is difficulty in getting to the, uh, the treatments. And so I was very pleased to see this. And uh, this, to me, is a measure of this community, how much we care, how much we support, and how much we should be proud of each other. And a tremendous uh, achievement by the volunteers and the participants. And again, my hat's off to uh, the courage and the, uh, the strength of the uh, cancer survivors. This evening, I had the opportunity to attend the uh, National Day of Mourning uh, service uh, uh, hosted by the United Steelworkers and Valley. And uh, I appreciate Council giving me leave to attend that event. I think it's a very uh, important event, and I understand uh, a moment of silence was uh, paid in respect here this evening. Um, the messages are very strong. The reality is, is uh, alarming. Every day in Canada, three people that go to work will not return home three people every day and I know that we are fortunate in Thompson not because we haven't had serious incidents President Nishapork made a made a point of ensuring that he noted that every member that has given their life is recognized but we have industry United Steelworkers at Valley and here at the city of Thompson that are leaders, I think, in this country through safe production and safe operations and managing risk to achieve zero harm. That is a tremendous, again, commitment of this community and our employees and a message. So I encourage people to support those organizations um, again, it's our job as a city of Thompson, as the community, to ensure people are going to the workplace and going home every day to their families. And so I thank uh, this community for caring and for the innovative and the leadership they've shown in terms of implementing programs that will begin and continue to address that. A couple of quick things. I'll note that uh, in terms of upcoming uh, meetings, uh, this Thursday, I believe, uh, we have a public works meeting at 2 p.m. It will be held at the Thompson Regional Community Centre. Again, committee meetings open to the public, encourage people to attend. And that will be May 1st. And on May 2nd, we have a development review committee, I believe, 10 a.m. at City Hall. Mr. Sepatelli, that's correct. Again, encourage people to come out and uh, if they want to attend those meetings, they can raise issues that they want. There are times that the committees are required to go in camera uh, where uh, it'll be the committee members, but encourage people to attend the, uh, the general parts of the meeting. So uh, lastly, I do want to note again, uh, we're, uh, we're experiencing finally some spring weather, um, which is great news. The bad news is, boy, is it showing the ugly side of our community. The potholes, I don't think I've ever seen them at the uh, degree they're at. I can tell you our crews are out. We're filling them. Uh, I had someone mention to me, well, the crew was out. They only filled one side of the street. Good question. Good question. I inquired. It was the dry side. The wet side had water in the potholes still, and until we get the water out and they're dry, there's not much point. So our crews are out there addressing the issues on the potholes. We're still removing some of the snow from some of the, the areas. I know a number of residents have felt that uh, uh, we need to move it faster. I can tell you, we've been dealing with some water break issues. We're going to get back to it as, uh, as our resources allow. I know that many people, especially last night, were experiencing some flooding, including myself on my window well on my backyard. And uh, people are having to pump. 
uh, I appreciate uh, but uh, the work that's being put in. We had a very challenging winter this year with the level of snow. So we're going to get out, try and move some of the uh, major areas. I know the uh, question has been raised about the corner of Selkirk and uh, Mystery Lake Road. I can tell you we had some equipment challenges there and in most cases the catch basins are frozen and we have to steam them. Our guys are working hard. I tell you, I uh, had the chance along with city managers to drive the city. Our crews are out and they're working hard. I ask people, take care and caution in around our crews as they work and uh, appreciate the, uh, the support of the community. Lastly, in terms of uh, the impact of a continuing uh, uh, winter is uh, just because it's warming up, don't think the uh, freezing of uh, private service lines is going to disappear. In fact, it's, the frost will be driven down. And again, I urge people to take caution, visit our website, take a look at the tips we have in terms of addressing freezing pipes. So lastly, I just want to note that uh, by the virtue of the authority vested in me as Mayor of Thompson, I did proclaim April 28, 2014 as National Day of Mourning in the City of Thompson. I can further add that the flags uh, were flowing at half-mast here at City Hall and at uh, uh, some of the city facilities. I want to ch thank Chief Mascarene uh, for addressing uh, that, ensuring that that was in place. And uh, very much appreciate, again, uh, the United Steelworkers, uh, our locals, uh, as well as uh, Local 6166 and uh, Valet for uh, their commitment. And lastly, I proclaim the uh, month of May 2014 as MS Awareness Month in the City of Thompson. I know I wasn't able to attend all the events. It was a very busy time. Uh, Deputy uh, Mayor Fenske, I know you attended an event on, uh, on our behalf, and maybe you can touch on that. Sure. Thank you, Mayor Johnson. Uh, on Saturday evening, I was uh, uh, joined uh, with uh, Councillor Byer, Councillor Fenye, Councillor Hogan, and our protege, em Emily. Uh, in attendance for the seventh annual YWCA Women of Distinction uh, Awards, uh, it was a great evening. Uh, Joy Thompson and her and her crew did an excellent job. Uh, the, the meal was great, and the nominees were phenomenal. Uh, Anna Rodriguez, uh, posthumously, uh, Mr. Rodriguez and his family were there. Nikki Ashton, Bobby Montine, uh, Sharon McKay, and I can't forget Mrs. Uh, Ms. Cool, Trita Cool, Corey Grant, uh, and Corey Grant. Uh, were the nominees for the Women of Distinction, and the uh, awards were presented to uh, Anna Rodriguez's uh, family and on behalf of uh, the Y, as well as Nikki Ashton and Bobby Montine. So uh, again, uh, Mayor Johnson spoke earlier about the, the uh, uh, cancer survivors and the whole Relay for Life and the leadership of, of the community, and here's another example of great leaders in our community um, that uh, have uh, gone above and beyond their day-to-day -day duties to uh, uh, to contribute to the, the betterness of this community. So it was a very, uh, very enjoyable event. Thank you. Thank you. Any further uh, comments from members of council? Councillor Collada, then Councillor Robinson. Thank you for your kind words on the relay. I just wanted to advise that the Canadian Cancer Society is returning some of the funds raised here back to Thompson as a direct result of a local lobby, and that lobby was headed up by Darlene Whalen. Uh, the funds will be used, as you said, for the transportation, but also in the chemo unit, which is too small and inadequate at this time. So uh, thanks to the folks who are involved in that. Absolutely. Good point. Thank you. Councillor Robinson. Thank you, Mayor Johnson. I attended the uh, MOS in uh, Brandon on April 16th, 17th, on the behalf of the city and the AMM. Uh, there were some great motivational speakers there, and a major topic of, of uh, discussion was the Mobile Canada Fund how the monies are being talked about being there, but no way to apply for them. So that is still up in the air, I believe, and it's still not finalized. So that was a big discussion. Also, I'd like to talk on the Relay for Life. Uh, I'd also like to recognize the fact that the uh, Lions Club did the cleanup the next morning, up bright and early. Some were attending the, the night before, and some were there cleaning up afterwards. So good job to them. The, there's three committees, if you will, that I'm on that I would like to draw your attention to at the trade show this weekend. One is the Thompson Lion Seniors Manor. They'll have a booth set up there. I'm bringing these to your attention because I feel they're important community events that will help build uh, a future for Thompson. Um, just so you know, we'll mention the lions again. They're donating the land for this project. They're in the process of doing the work required to hopefully qualify for funding from the province. 
And uh, of particular importance is the uh, concept of life leases, so I encourage residents to stop by that table to find out about the life leases and perhaps sign uh, to show your support for the project. Um, the other one is, uh, Councillor Hogan mentioned before, the Communities in Bloom is transitioning to a community event. Uh, they will have a presence there as well. Uh, there is another workshop coming up with Mr. Coulter uh, in the month of May. The last one was exceptionally well attended. And there are a few projects that uh, will be discussed or brought to light then. And the third organization is the Boreal Discovery Center. Um, legally still called the Thompson Zoological Society, but uh, making its transition to the Boreal Discovery Center. Uh, they will have some information on this summer programming, which will be along the lines of what the 24 hour, 365 day facility will eventually be like for programming, and they'll be able to provide more information. So those three uh, tables, please take time and, and visit and um, because they're all building blocks for Thompson coming up, so. Thank you. Councilor Thank you. Just quickly, there were two committees that I'm appointed to, the Thompson Urban Aboriginal Strategy and the Thompson Aboriginal Education Advisory Committee that have both met in this two-week period. And for the Thompson Urban Aboriginal Strategy, just the renewal of all the partners and members was confirmed based on some announcements federally, but the, um, the idea is to stay together and move forward and evolve and change as required. And um, I just wanted to point out that we also met with the employees to share the budget um, prior to it going public. And um, we did both a morning and an afternoon session. And uh, Councillor Fensky did the morning session and I did the afternoon session. As well as I did attend the Women of Distinction Awards and I just also want to give a public congratulations. It was a very inspiring evening to listen to um, the stories, <clears throat> how people tell the stories about those leaders in our community. And when you learn a little bit more about people and you see where their passions are, it's inspiring and uh, an event to be good for anybody to attend. So. Excellent. Thank you. That's going to uh, conclude the mayor's report with this. We're into a uh, interesting weather cycle. I tell people we have a Chinook almost every day in Thompson right now. We're going to go from minus to plus. I understand we may even have eight centimeters of snow in the next few days, according to the Fantasy Channel. So stay safe. Watch for frozen puddles and things like that. Entertain a motion to adjourn. <laughs>